Since 1947, the World Affairs Council has become the preeminent global stage for world leaders and the public to inform, engage, and debate the most important issues of our time. It's your world. Get to know it. Thank you, Bill, for that very kind introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you in San Francisco, but then I have to confess it's a pleasure to be anywhere but Washington, D.C. <clears throat> a place where so many people are lost in thought because it's such unfamiliar territory. where people say, I'll double cross that bridge when I get to it. <laughs> the only place in the world you can see a prominent person walking down Lover's Lane holding his own hand. <laughs> Early a decade of constant deployment and combat for our military, and especially our nation's ground forces. In Iraq, Marines, as is often the case, were handed some of the roughest real estate and saw some of the most brutal and deadliest fighting of the conflict. Places like Fallujah and names like Zembiek and Dunham will take their place in Marine Corps history along with the legends of the past. All told, the Iraq and Afghan campaigns have posed extraordinarily complex challenges to America's fighting men and women, forcing them to assume the role of diplomat, warrior, humanitarian, and development expert. They've shown what the late Marine General Victor Krulak once wrote was the adaptability, initiative, and improvisation that are the true fabric of obedience, the ultimate in soldierly conduct going further than sheer heroism. After World War II, some military leaders felt that Marine operations on land and in the skies had duplicated the functions of the Army and the Army Air Force. One Army general quipped, you Marines are nothing but a bunch of beach runners anyway. What do you know about land warfare? Ironic, given the concerns being expressed today. 